Hey guys, so it's PATHF Buckles back here with another video. And uh, today I'm making a video on um, what I'll be trapping squirrel and rabbit with a solar fur to a the repo guy. Um, so this is a Duke number one long spring right here. Cost me about a few six bucks at Gander Mountain. Right here. That's the dog, trap pan, jaws, spring that you can press, and uh, the dog, and then you loosen these with pliers and uh, um, a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten the pan and loosen the pan. So right now, I'll show you how to set one. Um, what you're going to want to do. You're gonna I kneel down on them or stand on them on the spring now. And then I will put the dog over the fixed jaw and uh put it into the pin. So uh that's how you do it. You close these springs. As long as you have this one pushed down, these springs can't open. Okay. So then you will Push this in. This is my new this is Duke number one long spring. And I'll set this on a tree or on the ground for rabbits. And the way I just kill them is uh, with the pellet gun straight to the head, one shot. And uh, this is how you release them or release the, set the trap off. Okay, if you don't catch one, you're pulling your traps. All you do is pull, push up the uh, loose jaw. Press down on the pan, and uh, it goes off. Remember, don't put your hand put your hands under the loose jaw. Another thing I'll make is a snare. In ten minutes, I'll bring down a batch of the snares. But all I do right now is <clears throat> make yourself a loop, cross it over with a tag end. You wrap it around your thumb twice. Push the tag end through the two loops. Get the tag in, cinch it's up and down. I make log pull sets, and you'll trim off this side, so I make log pull sets. So I'll put two sides on, so I can cinch one down, one side down to the the log. And uh, I put some peanut butter as a bait, generic starter bait for rabbits and squirrels. Take it both. Um, this is 25 pound test line. Trim the tags off. There you go. You got a snare made in five minutes, or not five minutes, uh, a few seconds. Cinch it down on both ends. And I'll show you what squirrel's about. An average one's about two and a half pounds, two pounds. I'll show you how all of this works. So, right here, I'm bringing it's a 2.5 pound weight. Okay. So, I don't know if this will fit actually over because this actually may be a small one right here. Might. There we go. Alright, so where is something I can hook it on to? Hmm. Alright, it doesn't matter. Alright, so this is what happens 2.5 pounds is about. Two and a half pounds is about the weight of a squirrel. Squirrel comes. That's cinched down pretty tight, okay? Put pokes his head through. That's a that that's a headshot. It's dead, okay. I don't it's like it hurts to like There we go. It's cinched down that hard. That's gonna kill a squirrel, okay? Um Body catches, I'll shoot them with a pellet gun straight through the head. Works every time and kills them. I'll show you a finished product of a squirrel that will be going off the market next year that I killed back in October. I didn't know what to do with it really. Um, I was thinking about it was my first bow kill squirrel. So I was thinking about Tate put uh tan it up and making a pellet that I'll hang. But I decided not to, and it was too late. 
Depot man already uh FNAF already went off so uh I'll bring in a finished product of a uh, fox squirrel like it was my best. Alright, so one thing I'm bringing in is I'll be drying all my fox and coyotes with. But uh, here is a finished fox squirrel. And you can tell it's dried out. That red is where I hit it. That's a good shot. Hit it in the heart. Probably broke its rib cage. Uh, maybe the rib cage went into the lungs or heart and died in 10 seconds. But here it is. Um, flush it out. You kill it, skin it, flush it out. Salt it if you want to, and then you will uh, um, tan it or uh, dry it out. I have been case skin this one, so uh, I put it on a board, just cut right down the middle. Nice fox squirrel, I'd say. And uh, I'm gonna show you some of the fur hangers, how I make them, and fur hangers. So you take yourself a wire fur hanger or a hanger. Clothes hanger, and all you do is cut the uh, middle right here, and you'll bend this up so it hooks up. Put your fur through the eye right there. I have to make two more because uh, this year I'll be trapping five species or and hunting five species squirrel and rabbit. I'll be trapping with snare or that foothold you just saw. Um, coyote and fox will be predator hunting with, and uh, deer. I won't hang these, so I'll have to make two more to be more organized. This one, say, could be put on with a uh, rabbits. The other two could be coyotes and fox. But uh, here's the pelt, and the head's about I don't know. This is a little wider than a normal head because it's been dried and everything. But uh, this would fit over a head right here, and this is how it would look if it got uh, trapped. So. It'd be pretty tight, I'd say. And just hang in there for you to come and do what you need. Plus, squirrels, a lot of fur bears you won't eat. Well, I don't eat. I'll save them for coyote and fox bait. Trapping. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's what I'll do with them. I use a fox pro for my collar for uh, coyote and fox hunting. I use, I'll show you the crossbow I use. I use a crossbow with muzzy broadheads, and I don't like a too big of a cut fixed blade because uh, I'll tear up the pelt too much, but just enough so it'll get the job done. Red dot sight for night hunting. Um, weighs probably three pounds, two pounds, 125 pool, and uh, it's a pretty nice strap, and uh, I usually shoot with a... Um, Oh, uh, I'm sure what they're called. But, uh, here's why I use it. It's a Duke number five wire stretcher. All you do is put the fur on, cinch it down on one, do the same with the other. And that's how you do that. Uh, flushing knife, flushing beam, apron, and, uh, skinning knife, some tacks. What else? Tail stripper are in the garage. And, uh, what else can I show you? Yeah, that's all the fur I have. Well, I have a deer pelt in the freezer freezing. I had it flushed out uh, last Saturday. We got back in deer season, but uh, other than that, I'll be hunting coyote and fox, snaring some squirrel and rabbit and deer. I'll be using their pelts too. Uh, I should saw that old in NAFA. Um, coyotes and fox. Fur prices were down last year. I didn't make a video. Well, I didn't have a YouTube account, but I probably wouldn't have made a video. So, uh, show the coyote trap I made, or, uh, I use. All 
All right, so here's the trap. And, uh, chain, about a foot long, foot and a half. Okay, so it's Duke, number two, coil spring. Here's the coils. Um, center, swivel, that's about it. I don't modify my traps too much. You push these down. I try to, it's real hard, so, because I don't, I don't weigh enough, and, uh, that's why it's harder. I usually have my dad compress the coils, but, uh, I don't need shoes. Here's my dad's slippers. Um, so, that's what I basically do. I do dirt hole sets with some iron post and stuff like that and trap them. Shoot them. Nuisance. They're big nuisance around here, uh, especially in Pennsylvania. I ain't trapper, hunter. I'll tell you that because, uh, they just are. Um, with all the damage they've been doing. To fix jaw. Fix jaw is so hard to set or get down. I need like a something to push down on with. That's always what I have time hard time with, but uh yeah, I'll practice on that. Other than that, um that, that's basically how my trapping and hunting season went. I got a few things. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching PATHF Outdoors. I'll see you later.